Church, Nevin, uh, let's see, the fort included a proposed order. Before we do that, I think, I mean, a round of applause for everybody first. But. This time we had Judge Nevin tell us from the very beginning by granting the injunction of killing the case and going forward. So the order that, um, the, the way it works, the judge said his order and we were all scribbling what he was saying, but then the attorneys actually write up the order, which is kind of funny, right? Like the judge's order is written by the attorneys. So the court had provided their proposed order, which is the template we worked from. We disagreed with a number of the provisions, but Judge Nevin looked at our disagreement with them and said, no, that's, that's what I want, is what the court said. So one of the things the court said was that uh, local, uh, local law cannot create constitutional rights. Judge Nevin agreed that he ruled that way, and they cited uh, Citizens United as an example of Supreme Court precedent that prevents the people locally from, um, from proposing lawmaking that restricts corporate power. So uh, usually when someone is talking constitutional rights, they're balancing constitutional rights, one person's constitutional rights versus another person's constitutional rights, it's a balancing. But we're seeing more and more is that the corporate attorneys are able to argue that corporate rights are inviolate, that you cannot question them at, at all. Uh, occasionally you'll get a judge who recognizes what corporations are. There's this amazing opinion out of Pennsylvania where the judge says, corporations are but grapes upon the vine of the law and the people can pluck them at their will. Right? It's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, but you know, that judge apparently has had a lot of trouble with uh, being attacked by corporate <laughs> lawyers and whatnot after that. Um, so Judge Nevin, you know, Citus is united. I said, you know, Judge Nevin, are you sure you don't want to go back to uh, Dartmouth College versus Woodward yeah. from 1819? And he said, no, I think we can leave it as is. But I don't know if he knows that case or not. Hard to tell. But, um, so you know, the, the challenge I think is that we think that these corporate rights stuff came in 2010 with Citizens United, but it goes way back. So 1819. The U.S. Supreme Court said that a corporation, a private corporation, and the state are co-equal contracting parties. It's not like the state creates a corporation and the corporation is supported. They're on the same plane. So the contracts clause protects the corporate charter. And, but then they went on at length to say that a municipal corporation, a city, is actually subordinate to the state. So while business corporations are co-equal contracting partners, 
the state controls the municipal corporation, which we saw you know, reaffirmed here, that uh, the municipal corporation uh, is basically a child of the state, and uh, Judge Nevin reaffirmed all that. So uh, one of our concerns was in February with the Supreme Court decision in Spokane that they had effectively made this pre-election challenge so broad that it, um, that it, it kills the initiative. Right? And can we still propose things by initiative uh, with the, the standard list, completely uh, open, hypothetical field that is now created by state Supreme Court precedent as of February? And I think what we saw today was obviously one judge's opinion on it, but um, the answer was yes, that the local initiative power is dead in Washington. Let's make no bones about it. That um, the courts have killed it through their own decisions, intentionally, without any authority from the people, without any authority from our own elected officials, as if our own elected officials would give that authority. But the courts are saying, well, yeah, the state legislature gave you the power to do the local initiative, and we can give ourselves the power to police how you do that. So I think where we need to go from here is say, not that this is Judge Nevin, that this isn't just one person uh, coming up with the wrong decision. Right? He just basically followed a 9 year decision from our state Supreme Court. Right? So don't blame Judge Nevin. Look at the system. Right? And now we have a system where the courts have decided that they're going to police the people and regulate uh, our lawmaking power. So it's going to be up to us to decide uh, how important that is to us and what we're going to do about it. Lindsay, if I could sum up what you just said, I think you're saying that basically the judge agreed with the court that corporate rights trump local rights. Yeah. I think it would be good if we were to get as many people as possible to the city council meeting yes. with the demand, let the voters decide. Yes. This, this goes right to the heart of the matter. You know, do the voters get a chance to decide about the water or not? If we can, if we can mobilize enough people, I mentioned this before. Some of you were here. Demonstrations. And Sarah Morgan is willing to help us on that. She's really good. Mass demonstrations of people to maybe have a rally on a Saturday and maybe a, a march, a smaller march on the city hall when they're having the open citizens forum with people, with a single demand of let the voters decide. Put this on the ballot. They have the power to put this on the ballot. Let the people decide, you know, because that's that's where people are angry. I think that a lot of people are angry that voters don't have a chance to decide this. Right. So we, in setting up the initiative power in Tacoma in 1909, right, and in the state in 1912, we said, you know, how do we decide whether an initiative goes in the ballot? Well, we decide because somebody gets enough signatures on the proposal, and that's the threshold requirement. We don't want just any single person to put forward an initiative. There has to be at least enough momentum for it um, that you meet the signature gathering threshold. So, you know, we're not questioning that as a legitimate part right now, although there's some critiques you can make of that. But basically, if you get the signatures, you should go on. The courts have said, if you get the signatures, then we decide whether we like your idea or not. And we can veto it, which is what just happened here. Right. So, uh, in terms of where to go from here, I think the more important questions are the organizing questions. Uh, there's some questions legally as to whether we, uh, where do we take this case uh, and, and where we go there. Uh, that's more technical and in this gathering, I don't think that's a useful purpose of our time. I think the more valuable thing is how are we gonna organize and move forward from here. So, you know, as an attorney in the case, I want to say, you know, we'll be thinking about where to go and, and moving the case forward if that's what, say, Tacoma Water wants to do and how the best way to do that is. But in terms of organizing, I don't want people to be looking at me for the direction for organizing. That's something that we have to look to mm -hmm. each other. The one thing I'd like to say tactically is that this isn't a, about Judge Nevin, this is about a system. Right. So that's what I want to say and I'll sit down. And another person brought up last night up there in the middle place. What about the situation if there isn't enough water for all the clients left to be I mean, there's certain legal requirements we talked about last night. But now, say, a grant, a provision, is some industry that we can use 
10.4 million gallons a day, and another industry 10.4 million gallons. Pretty soon you have uh, not enough water for the city's resources that are available, especially during the drought, to give everybody uh, fresh water for their drinking, their cooking, and other home purposes or necessary purposes. What, how does the law take, uh, where does the, what does the law say about that situation in the development? So we can talk about water law for a long time. Uh, it's a fascinating area and I love water law. Um, it's a subset of property law, which isn't necessarily a good way for us to decide how our resources are used. But um, the general framework here is Tacoma has a really old water right. And so it, on paper, has the right to withdraw a lot of water from the Green River and some aquifers, uh, groundwater, and use that. So um, if there's not enough water to go around between different people with water rights, Tacoma's got a pretty old water right, and the junior users will have to curtail so Tacoma can get its full use. Um, but the problem is that Tacoma's paper water right, the legal water right on paper, might actually be less than the wet water that's available for Tacoma. So in water law, we draw this distinction between paper water and wet water. Somebody might say, I have a water right, but if you're a junior water user on a stream that's already way over allocated, your water right's not really worth anything, because when August rolls around, you'll be the one who has to stop, and the senior users keep going. So the paper water versus wet water is a real issue. Um, there's a lot of confusion both by the corporate council and Judge Nevin about water law versus municipal water supplier law. And they just, you know, stirred it all together because it benefited them. Um, we're not really, in this case, we weren't really talking about water law as in, is Tacoma's right uh, older or better than some other water users' right? We were more talking about within the water right that the city of Tacoma has, how is that decided? And I mean, statistically, what, what they've said is you don't have a water problem in Tacoma if the population projection trends mm -hmm. are as predicted and aren't higher than predicted, and if they can get more supply. Right? <laughs> so if you can get more supply, then you don't have a water crisis. Otherwise, by 2060, I think the stat is. Is that right? There will be a shortage in the Puget Sound area of 100 million gallons per day. And that's the whole Puget Sound area, you know, Tacoma, Seattle, uh, Everett are the three largest municipal water suppliers. But, I mean, we're looking at a pending water crisis. Already in western Washington, there are places where there are houses that have to get water trucked in because they don't have a legal water right to take water out of the ground under the house. Right, your land and your, your water right travel separately. Yeah. And so this issue is not going to go away. It's going to get worse. And I, I really see this, this case and what you all have been doing and where we go from here as questioning what future does Tacoma want, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to lock up that paper water right uh, in other large industries uh, like, what was it? A, who had the 15 million gallon bag? Well, not that some, there was a Northwest Was it a No, it was there. Northwest 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 North 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 So the paper mill shut down. It was using like 15 million gallons. No, that was Kaiser and 